Let us begin with the introduction. You are what you do. Evanus, the Roman philosopher, wrote, Habit, my friend, is practice long pursued, that at last becomes the man or woman, himself or herself. In other words, you create yourself by your actions. Aristotle said the same thing. Thank you for reading this book. In the pages ahead, you're going to learn a proven and practical series of strategies and techniques that you can use to achieve greater success and happiness in every area of your life. I'm going to share with you the so-called secrets of success practiced by most people who ever achieve anything worthwhile in life. When you learn and practice these techniques yourself, you'll never be the same again. The Great Question Many years ago, I began asking the question, why are some people more successful than others? This question became the focal point of a lifelong search, taking me to more than 120 countries and through many thousands of books and articles about philosophy, psychology, religion, metaphysics, history, economics, and business, and I spent thousands of hours on each of these subjects. Over time, the answers came to me one by one and gradually crystallized into a clear picture and a simple explanation. You are where you are and what you are because of yourself. Everything you are today or ever will be in the future is up to you. Your life today is the sum total of your choices, decisions, and actions up to this point. You can create your own future by changing your behaviors. You can make new choices and new decisions that are more consistent with the person you want to be and the things you want to accomplish with your life. Just think, everything you are or ever will be is up to you. And the only real limit on what you can be or do and have is the one you place on your own imagination. You can take complete control of your destiny by taking charge of your thoughts, words, and actions from this day, from this moment forward. The power of habit. Perhaps the most important discovery when it comes to the psychology of success is that fully 95% of everything you think, feel, do, and achieve is the result of habit. Beginning in childhood, you have developed a series of conditioned responses that lead you to behave automatically and unthinkingly in almost every situation. To put it simply, successful people have success habits, and unsuccessful people do not at least not yet. Successful, happy, healthy, and prosperous men and women easily, automatically, and consistently do and say the right things in the right way at the right time. As a result, they accomplish 10 or 20 times more than average people who have not yet learned these habits or practiced these behaviors. The definition of success. People often ask me to define the word success. My favorite definition is this. Success is the ability to live your life the way you want to live it, doing what you most enjoy, surrounded by people you admire and respect. In a larger sense, success is the ability to achieve your dreams, desires, hopes, wishes, and goals in each of the important areas of your life. Although each of us is unique, different from all other human beings who have ever lived, we all have four goals or desires in common. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, you can conduct a quick evaluation of your life by giving yourself a grade in each of these four areas. Healthy and fit. The first goal in common to all of us is health. We all want to be healthy and fit, to have high levels of energy, and to live free from pain and illness. Today, with the incredible advances in medical science, the quality of our health and fitness and our lifespan are largely determined by design, not by chance. People with excellent health habits are far healthier, have more energy, and live longer and better than people with poor health habits. We will look at these good habits and how we can develop them later in this book. Excellent relationships. The second goal we all have in common is to enjoy excellent relationships, intimate, personal, or social, with people we love and respect and who love and respect us in turn. According to psychologist Sidney Girard, fully 85% of your happiness will be determined by the quality of your relationships at each stage and in each area of your life. How well you get along with people and how much they like, love, and respect you has more impact on the quality of your life than perhaps any other factor. Throughout this book, you will learn the key habits of communication and behavior that build and maintain great relationships with other people. Do what you love. The third common goal we each have is to do work we enjoy and do it well and be well paid for it. You want to be able to get and keep the job you want, get paid more and be promoted faster. You want to earn the very highest possible salary at each stage of your career, whatever you do. In this book, you will learn how to develop the habits of the most successful and highest paid people in every field. The fourth area is to achieve financial independence. The fourth goal we all have in common is to achieve financial independence. You want to reach the point in life where you have enough money that you never have to worry about it again. You want to be completely free from financial concerns. You want to be able to order dinner in a restaurant without even looking at the prices on the menu. Developing Million Dollar Habits In the pages ahead, you will learn how to develop the million dollar habits of men and women who go from rags to riches in one generation. 
You will learn how to think more efficiently, make better decisions, take more effective actions than other people. You will learn how to organize your financial life in such a way that you achieve all your financial goals far faster than you can imagine today. One of the most important goals you must achieve to be happy and successful in life is the development of your own character. You want to become an excellent person in every respect, the kind of person that others look up to and admire. You should strive to become a leader in your community and a role model for personal excellence to all the people around you. The decisive factor in whether you achieve these goals is developing these specific habits that lead automatically and inevitably to the results you desire. All habits are learned. The good news is that all habits are learned through practice and repetition. You can learn any habit you consider either necessary or desirable. By using your willpower and discipline, you can shape your personality and character in almost any way you desire. You can write the script of your own life, and if you're not happy with the current script, you can rip it up and write a new one. Just as your good habits are responsible for most of your success and happiness today, your bad ones are responsible for most of your problems and frustrations. But because bad habits are learned as well, they can be unlearned and replaced with good habits by the same process of practice and repetition. First in character. George Washington, the first president of the United States and the general in command of the Continental Army in the American Revolution, is rightly called the father of his country. He was admired, if not worshipped, for the quality of his character, his graciousness of manner, and his correctness of behavior. But that's not the way George Washington started off in life. He came from a middle-class family with few advantages. One day, as a teenage boy, aspiring to succeed and prosper, he came across a little book entitled The Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior in Company and Conversation. Washington copied these 110 rules into a personal notebook, carried it with him, and reviewed it constantly throughout his life. By practicing the rules of civility, he developed the habits of behavior and manners that led to him being considered first in the hearts of his countrymen. By deliberately practicing and repeating the habits that he most desired to make a part of his character, George Washington became, in every respect, a self-made man. He learned the habits he needed to learn to become the kind of man he wanted to become. The first millionaire. During the same period, Benjamin Franklin, who began as a printer's apprentice and went on to become the first self-made millionaire in the American colonies, adapted a similar process of personal development. As a young man, Franklin felt he was a little rough, ill-mannered, and argumentative. He recognized that his attitudes and behaviors were creating animosity toward him from his associates and co-workers. He resolved to change by designing and developing his own personality. He began this process of personal development by making up a list of 13 virtues he felt the ideal person would possess. He then concentrated on the development of one virtue each week. All week long, as he went about his daily affairs, he would remind himself to practice that virtue, whether it was temperance, frugality, or tranquility. On every occasion it was called for. Over time, as he developed these virtues and made these habits a part of his character, he would practice one virtue for a period of two weeks, and then three weeks, and then one virtue per month. Over time, he became one of the most popular personalities and statesmen of the age. He became enormously influential both in Paris as an ambassador from the United States during the Revolutionary War and in Philadelphia during the Constitutional Convention when the Constitution for the United States was debated, negotiated, and agreed upon. By working on himself to develop the habits of personal excellence, Franklin made himself into a person capable of shaping the course of history. You are in complete control. The fact is that good habits are hard to form but easy to live with. Bad habits, on the other hand, are easy to form, but hard to live with. In either case, you develop either good or bad habits as a result of your repeated choices, decisions, and behaviors. Educator Horace Mann said, Habit is a cable. We weave a thread of it each day, and then it becomes so strong we cannot break it. One of your great goals in life should be to develop the habits that lead to health, happiness, and true prosperity. Your aim should be to develop the habits of character that enable you to be the very best person you can imagine yourself becoming. The high purpose of your life should be to ingrain within yourself the habits that enable you to fulfill your full potential. In the pages ahead, you will learn how your habit patterns are developed and how you can transform them in a positive way. You will learn how to become the kind of person who inevitably and relentlessly, like the waves of the ocean, moves onward and upward toward the accomplishment of every goal you set for yourself. John Dryden once wrote, we first make our habits, and then our habits make us. Chapter 1. Where Your Habits Begin Tyron Edwards once wrote, Any act, often repeated, soon forms a habit, and habit allowed steadily gains in strength. At first it may be, but as the spider's web, easily broken through, but if not resistant, soon binds us with chains of steel. 
You are extraordinary. You come into this world with more talents and abilities than you could ever use. You could not exhaust your full potential if you lived 100 lifetimes. Your amazing brain has 100 billion cells, each of which is connected to as many as 28,000 other neurons. The possible combinations and permutations of ideas, thoughts, and insights you can generate are equivalent to the number one followed by eight pages of zeros. According to brain expert Tony Buzan, the number of thoughts you can think is greater than all the molecules in the known universe. This means that whatever you have accomplished in your life to this date is only a small fraction of what you are truly capable of achieving. The psychologist Abraham Maslow once wrote, The story of the human race is the story of men and women selling themselves short. The average person settles for far less than she is truly capable of achieving. Compared with what you could do, everything you have accomplished so far is only a small part of what is truly possible for you. The challenge is that you come into the world with the most incredible brain, surrounded by unlimited possibilities for success, happiness, and achievement, but you start off with no instruction manual. As a result, you have to figure it all out for yourself. Most people never do. They go through life doing the very best they can, but they never come within shouting distance of doing, having, and being all that is possible for them. I started off in life with few advantages. My father was not always employed, and my family never seemed to have any money. I began working and paying for my own clothes and expenses when I was 10 years old, doing odd jobs around the neighborhood. I hoed weeds, delivered newspapers, mowed lawns, and raked leaves. When I was old enough, I got a job washing dishes in the back of a small hotel. My biggest promotion at that time was moving to washing pots and pans. I left high school without graduating and worked as a laborer for several years. I worked in sawmills stacking lumber and in the woods slashing brush with a chainsaw. I dug ditches and wells. I worked on farms and ranches. I worked in factories and on construction sites. For a time, I was a galley boy on a Norwegian freighter in the North Atlantic. I earned my living by the sweat of my brow. When I could no longer find work as a laborer, I got a job in straight commission sales, cold calling from door to door and office to office. For a long time, I was one sale away from homelessness. If I did not make a sale that day and get my commission immediately so I could pay for my room at the boarding house, I would have been out on the street. This was not a great way to live. The key to success. Then one day I began asking the question, why are some people more successful than others? Especially, why are some salespeople more successful than others? Looking for an answer to that one question, I did something that changed my life and began the formation of a habit that profoundly affected my future. I went and asked the most successful salesman in my company what he was doing differently from me. And he told me. And I did what he told me to do, and my sales went up. In the Bible it says, ask and you shall receive. I soon developed the habit of asking everyone in every way possible for the answers I needed to move ahead more rapidly. I began to read books on selling and put into action what I had learned. I listened to audio programs while I walked and eventually as I drove around. I attended every sales seminar I could find. I continually asked other successful salespeople for advice. And I developed the habit of immediately acting on any advice or good idea I received or learned. As a result, and not surprisingly, my sales went up and up. And eventually I surpassed everyone else in my company. Soon, my company made me a sales manager and asked me to recruit and teach other people the same skills that it enabled me to be so successful. Soon, I was recruiting salespeople with newspaper ads, teaching them the sales methods and techniques I had learned, and sending them out to call on prospects and customers. In no time at all, my students began making sales and moving upward and onward in their own lives. Many of those young salespeople are millionaires today. The Iron Law of the Universe What I learned from this experience was the great law of cause and effect. This is the foundational principle of Western philosophy and modern thought. It says that for every cause there is an effect. Everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by accident. This law says that even if you do not know the reason something happens, there is still an explanation for it. Here is one of the most important principles of success. If you do what other successful people, you will eventually get the same results that they do. And if you don't, you won't. Nature is neutral. Nature does not favor one person over another. The Bible says, God sendeth rain to fall on the just and on the unjust. When you do the things that other successful people do, over and over again, you will eventually get the same results. It's not a matter of luck or chance or accident. It's a matter of law. This was an extraordinary idea for me. Even today, I am awed by the immensity and power of this simple principle. If you want to be happy, healthy, prosperous, popular, positive, and confident, just find out how other people who are enjoying these benefits got that way and do the same things they do. Think the same thoughts, feel the same feelings, take the same actions, and as sure as 2 plus 2 makes 4, you will eventually get the same results. It's no miracle. You can learn anything. Over the years, I've worked in a variety of businesses and industries. I've traveled in 120 countries, learned different languages, and developed various skills. In my 30s, I completed high school and got a business degree from a leading university. 
In every job and in every situation, I started off by asking, what are the rules or principles for success in this area? I then read books, attended courses, and asked everyone I could find for their insights and ideas. When I became a sales manager, I read every book and article I could find on sales management and applied the ideas and principles I learned to building and directing a successful sales force. When I got into real estate development, I read dozens of books on the subject. Within a year, starting with no money and no contacts, I developed and built a $3 million shopping center and came out owning 25% of it. When I got into the importation and distribution of Japanese automobiles, I again read the books, spoke to the experts, and did my research to find out how to set up a network of dealerships. In the next four years, I established 65 dealerships and imported and sold more than $100 million worth of vehicles. Over the past 35 years in my work and with more than 1,000 large corporations, my entire focus has been on discovering the reasons for sales, revenue, and profits in each business or industry, and then determining how those principles could be best used to achieve the results of the most successful companies. When people complimented me on my successes, I eagerly shared with them what I had learned. I told them they could, could learn anything they needed to learn to achieve any goal they set for themselves. All they had to do was find out the cause and effect relationship in any area of focus and then apply them to their own activities. If they did this, they would soon get the same results as other successful people in that field. Taking control of your life. But instead of taking this advice, most people would not smile and agree and then turn away and go about their day-to-day -day activities. They would start work at the last possible moment, waste much of the day in idle conversation with co-workers, checking email, social media, and personal business, leave work at the earliest possible time, and then spend their evenings socializing or watching television. In frustration, I began to study psychology and metaphysics. I eventually learned that there are a series of universal principles and timeless truths that explain much of human success and failure. These principles explain happiness and unhappiness, riches and poverty, health and ill health, and good and poor relationships. They explain why some people have wonderful lives and others do not. The first law that I discovered was the law of control. This law says that you feel happy to the degree to which you feel you are in control of your own life. You feel unhappy to the degree to which you feel you are not in control of your own life. Modern psychology calls this locus of control theory. Psychologists differentiate between an internal locus of control and an external one. Your locus of control is where you feel the control exists in each area of your life. This location determines your happiness or unhappiness more than any other factor. For example, if you feel that you are the primary creative force in your own life, that you make your own decisions, and that everything that happens to you is a result of yourself and your own behaviors, you have a solid internal locus of control. As a result, you will feel strong and confident and happy. You will think with greater clarity and perform at higher levels than the average person. On the other hand, if you feel that your life is controlled by other factors or people, by your job, your boss, your childhood experiences, your bills, your health, your family, or anything else, you will have an external locus of control. You will feel like a victim. You will feel like a pawn in the hands of fate. You will soon develop what Dr. Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania calls learned helplessness. You will feel unable to change or improve your situation and will soon develop the habit of blaming others and making excuses for your problems. This type of thinking leads inevitably to anger, frustration, and failure. We'll talk more about this later in this chapter. The power of belief. The next law I discovered was the law of belief. This is the basic principle that underlies most religion, psychology, philosophy, and metaphysics. This law says, whatever you believe with conviction becomes your reality. In the New Testament, Jesus says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. In the Old Testament, it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, his beliefs, so is he. Professor William James of Harvard wrote in 1895, Believe that life is worth living, and your belief will help create the fact. The fact is you do not believe what you see, but rather you see what you already believe. Your deeply held beliefs distort your worldview and cause you to see things not the way they are, but the way you are. The worst of all beliefs are self-limiting beliefs. These are beliefs that you have developed and throughout your life, usually false, that cause you to believe that you are limited in some way. Your negative beliefs soon become habitual ways of thinking. You may believe that you lack intelligence, creativity, personality, the ability to speak publicly, the ability to earn a high income, the ability to lose weight, or the ability to achieve your goals. As a result of your self-limiting beliefs, you continually sell yourself short. You give up easily in the pursuit of a goal, and even worse, you tell other people around you that you lack certain qualities or abilities. Your beliefs then become your realities. You are not what you think you are, as they say, but what you think you are. In developing million-dollar habits, one of the most important steps you can take is to challenge your self-limiting beliefs. You begin this process by imagining that you have no limitations at all. 
When you develop your mind to the point where you absolutely believe that you can do anything you put your mind to, you will find a way to make that belief a reality. As a result, your whole life will change. As we will discuss later, beliefs are the hardest things of all to change. But there's good news. All beliefs are learned, and anything that has been learned can be unlearned. You can develop the beliefs of courage, confidence, and unstoppable persistence that you need for great success by reprogramming your subconscious mind in a specific way. Your self-fulfilling prophecies. The next law I discovered was the law of expectations. This law says that whatever you expect with confidence becomes your own self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, you do not necessarily get what you want, but rather what you expect. If you confidently expect something to happen, this expectation has a powerful effect on your attitude and your personality. The more confident your expectations, the more likely it is that you will do and say the things that are consistent with what you expect to happen. As a result, you will dramatically increase the probabilities that you will achieve exactly what you are hoping for. One of the wonderful things about expectations is that you can manufacture your own. You can get up each morning and say, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. As you repeat this throughout the day, you create a force field of positive energy that surrounds you and affects the people with whom you come in contact. In some remarkable way, a series of wonderful things, both large and small, will happen to you throughout the day. Successful people expect, in advance, to be successful. Happy people expect to be happy. Popular people expect to be liked by others. They develop the habit of expecting that something good will happen in every situation. They expect to benefit from every occurrence, even temporary setbacks and failures. They expect the best of other people and always assume the best of intentions, and they are seldom disappointed. The flip side of positive expectations are the negative expectations many people have. Unhappy people expect to fail more often than they succeed. They expect that other people will hurt or disappoint them. They expect their ventures to do poorly. Instead of expecting the best, they expect the worst, and because this law is neutral, they are seldom disappointed. The flip side of positive expectations are the negative expectations that many people have. Unhappy people expect to fail more often than they succeed. They expect that other people will hurt or disappoint them. They expect their ventures to do poorly. Instead of expecting the best, they expect the worst. And because this law is neutral as well, they are seldom disappointed. One of the most important things you can do to ensure a happy, healthy, and prosperous life is to expect the very best from every person or situation, no matter how it may look at the moment. Develop that habit of positive expectations. You will be amazed at the effect this has on you and on the people around you. You are a living magnet. The next law I learned about was the law of attraction. This law says you are a living magnet. You invariably attract into your life the people, ideas, and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts, especially your dominant thoughts emotionalized. This law has been written about and taught for 5,000 years. It is one of the most important principles in explaining success and failure. The law of attraction says that your thoughts are activated by your emotions, either positive or negative, and they then create a force field of energy around you that attracts into your life, like iron filings to a magnet, exactly the people and circumstances that are in harmony with those thoughts. Like all these laws, the law of attraction is neutral. If you think positive thoughts, you attract positive people and circumstances. If you think negative thoughts, you attract negative people and circumstances. Successful, happy people continually think and talk about what they want to attract into their lives. Unsuccessful, unhappy people continually talk about the people and situations that cause them to feel angry and frustrated. One of the most important habits you can develop is the habit of keeping your mind full of exciting, positive, and emotional images of the exact things you want to see materialize in your life and the world around you. This is one of the most difficult disciplines, but one that pays off in extraordinary ways. As within, so without. The summary law of the laws we have just discussed is the law of correspondence. This law says that your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. It is as though you live in a 360 degree mirror. Everywhere you look, you see yourself reflected back at you. People treat you the way you treat them. The way you think about your physical body will be reflected in your health habits and your appearance. The way you think about people and your relationships will be reflected back to you in the quality of your friendships and your family life. The way you think about success and prosperity will be reflected in the results you enjoy in your career and your material life. In every case, your outer world reflects back to you, like a mirror image, exactly what you are thinking in the deepest recesses of your mind. When you put the laws of cause and effect, control, belief, expectations, attraction, and correspondence together, you arrive at the great universal principles that explains your life and everything that happens to you. Here it is. You become what you think about most of the time. Just think. You become what you think about most of the time. 
What you think about, you bring about. You always move in the direction of your dominant thoughts. Everything in your outer world is controlled and determined by what you are thinking in your inner world. The good news is that there is only one thing in the universe over which you have complete control, and that is the content of your conscious mind. Only you can decide what you think about most of the time. And fortunately, this is all the control that you need to shape your life and determine your future. By taking complete control of your conscious thoughts, you can control the direction of your life. By taking control, you will feel happy, powerful, confident, and free. You will become unstoppable. So here's some action exercises. Look at your field today. Identify the three most important reasons some people are more successful than others. Take complete responsibility for your life and everything that happens to you. Refuse to make excuses or blame anyone for anything. Identify the self-limiting beliefs that might be holding you back. What if they weren't true at all? Expect the best of yourself and others. What would you do differently if you are absolutely guaranteed of success? Who have you attracted into your life with your dominant thoughts and emotions? How could you change this? Identify the changes you want to see in your life. What do you need to change in your inner world if you want to see these changes in your outer world? Determine the three most important habits of thought about yourself and others that you could develop to be happier and more successful in the future. Now, Robert Collier once wrote, You can do anything you think you can. This knowledge is literally the gift of the gods, for through it you can solve every human problem. It should make of you an incurable optimist. It is the open door to welfare. Chapter 2. The Master Program of Success Henry Ford once said, The whole secret of a successful life is to find out what is one's destiny to do and then do it. The great question for success is this. What do you think about most of the time? Why is it that some people think positive, constructive, and success-oriented thoughts while others think negative, pessimistic thoughts that lead inevitably to underachievement and failure? Many successful people over the years have been asked, what do you think about most of the time? Their answers are simple and consistent and yet so profound that they can be life-changing. In short, most of the time successful people think about what they want and how to get it. Unsuccessful people, on the other hand, most of the time think and talk about what they don't want and who is to blame for their problems and difficulties. As a result, they attract more and more of what they don't want and what makes them unhappy in their lives. The laws themselves are neutral. Whatever you think and talk about most of the time eventually comes into your life. For more than 100 years, psychologists have worked to understand and explain the functioning of the human mind, starting with Sigmund Freud and continuing through Alfred Adler, Carl Jung, Abraham Maslow, William Glasser, Eric Fromm, and B.F. Skinner. To the present day, psychologists have sought the reasons for happiness and unhappiness, success and failure, achievement and underachievement. They have all concluded, in one way or another, that how your mind is programmed in early childhood plays a decisive role in almost everything you think, feel, and accomplish as an adult. Your Master Program I have personally read hundreds of books and thousands of articles on psychology and the functioning of the human mind. Perhaps the most significant discovery for me was learning about the role of the self-concept in human performance and behavior. Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, called the idea of the self-concept the most important breakthrough in the understanding of human potential in the 20th century. Your self-concept is your master program of your subconscious computer. It acts as your mental operating system. Every thought, feeling, emotion, experience, and decision you have ever had is permanently recorded on this mental hard drive. Once recorded, these impressions then influence the way you think, feel, and behave from that point forward. Your self-concept precedes and predicts your levels of effectiveness in every area of your life. You always act on the outside in a manner consistent with the way you feel and think about yourself on the inside. Your self-concept explains why the mental laws have such an inordinate effect on your personality. The role of the mini self-concept. Once your self-concept in a particular area is formed, you always act in a manner consistent with it. You may have extraordinary ability in a particular area, but if your self-concept is poor in that area, you will always perform below your true potential. It turns out that you have a mini self-concept for every area of your life that you consider important. For example, you have a self-concept for how creative you are. You have a self-concept for how well you speak in public, for your memory, for your ability to learn new subjects. You have a self-concept for how popular you are and how well you get along with other people. You have a self-concept for what kind of spouse or partner you are and how desirable or attractive you are to members of the opposite sex. You have a self-concept for what kind of parent you are. You have a self-concept for how well you perform in each sport or physical activity. 
You have a self-concept for how organized or disorganized you are, how well you manage your time, how productive you are, and how much you get done in an average day. You have a self-concept for your ability to read, write, and do mathematics. In your business and career, in the context of Million Dollar Habits, you have a self-concept for every aspect of your financial life. You have a self-concept for how much you earn and how hard you have to work to earn that amount of money. You have a self-concept for how rapidly you are promoted and how much your earnings increase month by month and year by year. You have a self-concept for how much you earn on an annual basis and for how much you will be earning in the future. You have a self-concept for how well you save, invest, spend, and accumulate money. You have a self-concept of your personal financial net worth and how much you can acquire in the months and years of your life. Every aspect of your financial life on the outside is determined by your self-concept on the inside relative to your way of dealing with money. Your comfort zone. Whatever your self-concept, your habit of thinking about money or any other area of performance, very soon becomes your comfort zone. Your comfort zone then becomes your greatest single obstacle to improve performance. Once you get into a comfort zone in any area, you will struggle unconsciously to remain in that comfort zone, even though it may be vastly below what you are truly capable of achieving in that area. For example, with regard to money, if your comfort zone is earning $50,000 per year, that is how much you will earn. No matter what happens in the world around you, recessions, depressions, booms, busts, you will eventually stabilize at an earning level of $50,000 per year. You will use all your talents and abilities to get into and maintain that financial comfort zone. If you are accustomed to earning $100,000 per year and you lose your job or move across the country and start over, within a few months you will be earning $100,000 per year. Once your self-concept income level is permanently programmed into your mental hard drive, your subconscious and superconscious mind will always find a way to achieve that level of income no matter what happens around you. The key to achieving your full potential, increasing your income to vastly higher levels than it is today, and enjoying the very best that is possible for you in every area of life is for you to raise your self-concept in that area. You must develop new habits of thinking about what is possible for you. The way you accomplish vastly more on the outside is by changing your thoughts and feelings about your potential in that area on the inside. Reprogram yourself for greater success. In medicine, it is said that proper diagnosis is half the cure. To that end, let us look at the three parts of your self-concept, how they interact with one another, and how you can act to alter or improve them in any way you want and develop any habit of thought or action that you desire. Your ideal self. The first part of your self-concept is your self-ideal. This is the ideal image or picture you have of yourself, as if you are already the very best person you could possibly be. Your self-ideal is made up of your wishes, hopes, dreams, goals, and fantasies about your perfect future life, combined with the qualities and virtues that you admire most in yourself and other people. Your self-ideal is a composite of the very best person you could imagine yourself being, living the very best life you could possibly live. High-performing, successful, happy people have very clear, positive self-ideals. They have definite ideas of what they like, respect, and admire, as well as a clear picture of the virtues, values, and attributes of the superior men and women they want to emulate. The most successful people have an uplifting, inspiring vision of what a truly excellent person looks like and how he or she behaves. Because of the law of attraction, you inevitably move in the direction of becoming that which you most admire. The greater clarity you have about the ideal future life you want to live and the ideal person you want to be, the faster you will move toward becoming that person and the more opportunities will open up for you to make your ideal future vision a reality. Develop positive role models. In one study conducted some years ago, the researchers found many men and women who accomplished great things had, when they were young, been avid readers of the biographies and autobiographies of successful people. It seems you have a natural tendency to identify with the hero or heroine in any story you read, watch, or hear. When you continually immerse your mind in the stories of men and women who have accomplished wonderful things with their lives, you unconsciously identify with those characters and actually absorb their values, virtues, and qualities into your own personality. Former Harvard professor Dr. David McClellan, in his book, The Achieving Society, explained how role models have an inordinate effect on shaping the character and personality of the young. One of his conclusions was that the men and women who are the most admired and held up as models in society during the formative years of a young person's life have a powerful influence on the character and aspirations of that person when she grows to adulthood. For example, today some of the most positive role models are entrepreneurs who launch companies with new products, services, and technologies. By the same token, young people who have positive role models around them when they're growing up are much more likely to become men and women of quality and character than young people who have no role models 
or even worse, negative role models that often occurs today in some cities and neighborhoods. It turns out that unhappy, unsuccessful men and women tend to be very fuzzy or unclear about their ideals. If you ask them what they consider to be the most valuable and important qualities in human character and personality, they either give vague or contradictory answers. This lack of clarity or certainty about what constitutes an ideal person often causes an individual to go around in circles in life, associate with negative influences, and spend time with people who are equally uncertain about the person they want to be when they grow up. Your values shape your personality. The values you choose to live by and the way you define those values shape and influence your personality and your achievements as much or more than any other single factor. When you take the time to think through and develop absolutely clarity about the key values and qualities you admire the most and wish the most to incorporate into yourself, you begin to shape and direct your whole personality and determine the results you achieve in the future. As you think about your values and reflect upon how you could incorporate them into your life and behavior, you actually become a different person. As a result, you attract different people and opportunities into your life. Your outer world soon begins to mirror your inner world. You start to move more rapidly toward achieving your most important goals, and your goals begin to move rapidly toward you. It all begins with you taking complete control of the formation and development of your personal ideal. How you see yourself. The second part of your self-concept is your self-image. Beginning with the work of Dr. Maxwell Maltz in his wonderful book, Psycho-Cybernetics, 2016, we learn that the way you see yourself on the inside largely determines how you perform on the outside. If you see yourself as a positive, popular, productive, and successful on the inside, that's exactly how you will act on the outside, and the way you behave on the outside will largely determine the results you get. The results you get will reinforce your self-image in either a positive or negative way and will set you up to repeat the same behaviors in the next similar situation. Your self-image is often called your inner mirror. This is the mirror that you look into prior to engaging in any performance or entering into any event of importance. If you see yourself as confident and successful prior to meeting a new person, applying for a job, or making a presentation, that is how you will perform in the actual situation. If you have a poor self-image, if you see yourself as not being particularly popular, confident, or competent, your negative self-image will cause you to feel clumsy, awkward, and inadequate during the upcoming event. One of the most important habits you can develop is the habit of feeding your mind before every important situation with positive pictures and images of yourself performing at your very best. Take a few moments, as athletes, politicians, and performers do, and imagine yourself succeeding brilliantly at what you are about to do. Hold that picture in your mind for as long as you possibly can. Then relax and let it go. Later, when you're actually in that situation, your subconscious mind will remember the picture and give you the words, actions, and gestures that correspond exactly to the picture you created a short time before. The core of your personality. The third part of your self-concept is your self-esteem. This is the feeling or emotional component of your personality, the reactor core of your subconscious mind. Your level of self-esteem determines the vitality and energy of your personality and acts as the control valve on your performance. Many psychologists today agree that your level of self-esteem is the most important part of your personality and largely predicts your success or failure, happiness or unhappiness, in every area of your life. In fact, your self-esteem is so important that you tend to organize your whole life around it. It is said that almost everything you do is either to gain greater self-esteem or protect against the loss of self-esteem. The rule with regard to your self-esteem is that everything counts. Everything that happens to you and around you affects your self-esteem in some way. Everything either increases or lowers your self-esteem. Everything that happens to you either supports or threatens your self-esteem. You are like the proverbial long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Every word or gesture of other people toward you affects your self-esteem in some way. The preservation and development of your self-esteem thus becomes the key to high performance, happiness, and great success. Comparing your behavior with your ideal. Your self-esteem is affected by many factors. One of the most important is the distance between your self-image, the way you see yourself in the moment, and your self-ideal, the way you would ideally like to be sometime in the future. When you feel that your current performance and behavior are consistent with the best person you can possibly be, your self-esteem goes up. You feel happier and more exhilarated. You have more energy and enthusiasm. You are more positive and personable with others. On the other hand, whenever your current performance or behavior seems to be inconsistent or distant from the person you would like most to be, your self-esteem goes down. You feel anxious and unhappy. You feel self-conscious and embarrassed. You feel frustrated and angry. The good news is that the greater clarity you have regarding your self-ideal, the person you would most like to be, the easier it is for you to tailor your performance and behavior to be consistent 
with the kind of person you most admire. And every time you do or say something you feel is more consistent with your self-ideal, your self-esteem goes up. You feel happier and more confident. You feel more positive and powerful. You feel capable of doing more and better things in that area and in other areas of your life. The best definition of self-esteem. The very best definition of self-esteem is how much you like yourself. What we have found is that the more you like yourself, the better you do. And the better you do, the more you like yourself. Each time you perform well in any area, your self-esteem goes up. You like yourself more, and you perform even better in that area and in other areas as well. The most powerful words you can use to take control of your personality and build your self-esteem are the words, I like myself. The more you repeat the words, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself, to yourself, the happier and more confident you will feel, and the better you will perform in whatever you are doing. When I first learned this powerful affirmation many years ago, my self-esteem was quite low. I had a poor self-image. I had a vague self-ideal. I was plagued by fears and doubts and tended to compare myself negatively with other people. To counter those feelings, I began to repeat the words, I like myself, 10 times, 20 times, even 50 times a day. It had a remarkable impact on my personality. Perhaps the most powerful words in your vocabulary are the ones that you say to yourself and believe. Most psychologists say that fully 95% of your emotions are determined by the words that are running through your mind at any given time. And your mind is very much like a vacuum. It does not remain empty for very long. If you do not intentionally fill your mind with positive, constructive words, it will fill itself up with your fears, worries, and concerns. To put it another way, if you do not deliberately plant flowers in the garden of your mind, weeds will grow automatically with no encouragement or support. Positive self-talk shapes your personality. One of the most important habits you can develop is the habit of talking to yourself positively most of the time. And the most positive words you can use throughout the day, especially prior to any important or significant event, are the words, I like myself. You cannot say these words to yourself without feeling happier, especially if you repeat them emotionally and emphatically. Every time you say, I like myself, your self-esteem goes up. As your self-esteem increases, you feel more positive and optimistic. You become more eager to set bigger goals and face greater challenges. The more you like yourself, the greater courage and confidence you have. The more you like yourself, the less your fears and doubts get in your way or interfere with your success. And you get all the benefits of self-esteem enhancement just by continually repeating, I like myself, over and over again. Supercharge your personality. The higher your self-esteem, the faster and easier it is for you to develop the million-dollar habits that enable you to accomplish extraordinary things. Since everything you do on the outside is controlled by your subconscious mind, your current programming, as you change your self-concept, you change your reality. Your self-concept is the seat of the laws of belief, expectation, attraction, and correspondence. It determines what you think about most of the time. It contains the root of learned helplessness and represents your comfort zone. Your main goal is to take complete control over the evolution and development of your self-concept and shape your personality and character into an extraordinary person who can accomplish remarkable things. Take the time to become absolutely clear about the virtues, values, qualities, and attributes that you most admire and aspire to make a part of your personality. Prior to every event of importance, create a clear mental picture of yourself performing at your very best, consistent with the highest values and qualities that you have or desire to have. Especially, continually repeat the magic words, I like myself, over and over, until they are accepted by your subconscious mind and become a permanent part of your personality. The more you respect yourself and consider yourself to be a worthwhile and valuable person, the faster you will develop every other habit, quality, and attribute that you need to fulfill your full potential. The foundation of your personality. At this point, many people ask, where does your self-concept come from? How does it begin? How does it develop? What are the major influences that shape your self-concept and how can you change your self-concept once it has developed? These are vital questions and there are definite answers for them. Most psychologists believe that each child is born with no self-concept at all. Every thought, feeling, idea, opinion, belief, or conviction you have as an adult has been learned starting in early infancy. You have been taught to believe the things you believe by the people and influences around you over the course of your lifetime, especially when you were a child. It is true that each child is born with certain personality characteristics and propensities and talents and leanings and other unique attributes and qualities. Some psychologists say that fully 60% of personality characteristics, such as courage, extroversion, musical interest, sensitivity, athletic ability, and so on, are inborn and innate. This is why children born into the same family with the same parents and similar upbringing often turn out totally different from each other. But how a person thinks and feels about themselves relative to their ability and potential is learned from early infancy. Your two natural qualities. When you are born, you come into the world with two natural qualities. First, you are completely unafraid. 
You are totally fearless. You have no reason to be afraid because you've had no experiences to make you afraid. The second natural quality is that you are completely spontaneous. You laugh, cry, pee, poop, sleep, and express yourself with no thought or concern about whether anybody approves or disapproves. These are your qualities in a state of nature. As an adult, when you feel completely relaxed and safe, surrounded by people you like and trust, your natural tendency is to revert to being completely open and unafraid, spontaneous and expressive. This is the ideal condition of the completely happy, fully functioning adult. Starting early in childhood as a result of the things your parents do and say, you begin to learn the two basic negative habit patterns that then become the most destructive influences in your life as an adult. The first negative habit pattern you learn is called the inhibitive negative habit pattern. This is what soon becomes the fear of failure, risk, and loss. As a child, you are extremely curious. Your natural urge is to explore your environment. You eagerly reach out to touch, taste, and experiment with everything around you. But often your parents react or even overreact to this behavior by discouraging you as much as possible. They say, no, get away from that. Don't touch that. Leave that alone. Many parents reinforce their words with spankings and other punishment. Children need love like roses need rain. Love is as important to the developing child as is food or oxygen. Any interruption of the flow of unconditional love to the child causes the child to feel nervous and frightened. Some psychologists say virtually all adult problems are rooted in the experience of love withheld in early childhood. When your parents become angry with you as a result of your natural desire and drive to explore your world and your environment, you have no way of understanding that this is because they fear for your safety. Instead, as a child, you merely respond with the idea that every time I try or touch or taste something new or different, my mother or father gets angry at me. It must be because I am incapable and incompetent. It must be because I am no good. It must be because I can't do it. Fear of trying anything new. This feeling of I can't marks the development of the fear of failure. If you are discouraged or punished too often as a child, very early in life you will become fearful of trying new things. This fear will then carry over into later childhood, adolescence, and adult life. When you become an adult and think of doing something new or different, or something that entails risk or uncertainty, your first reaction will be, I can't. As soon as you say the words, I can't, to yourself, you will begin immediately to think of all the reasons why such a thing is not possible for you. You will think and talk in terms of failure rather than success. You will think of the uncertainties and all the possible problems that may occur. Before you even try something new, you will talk yourself out of it. Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich, once asked an audience, what is the average number of times that a person tries to achieve a new goal before they give up? After several guesses from the audience, he gave the answer, less than one. His point was that most people give up before they even try once. Even though they want to improve their lives, and increase their incomes, and accomplish more than they do today, as soon as the new goal pops into their mind, most people automatically respond with the words, I can't, I can't do it. And then they begin thinking of all the reasons why it's not possible for them. The most important habit you can develop for great happiness and success is the habit of repeating to yourself and believing the words, I can do anything I put my mind to. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. The most powerful words you can repeat over and over to neutralize and overcome the fear of failure are, I can do it. I can do it on every occasion. The kindest words a parent can tell his or her child, in addition to I love you, are the words you can do anything you set your mind to. It's amazing how many people's lives have been dramatically affected by the influence of a single person, a parent, relative, or friend, who simply told them again and again, you can do it. What others might say. The second negative habit pattern we learn is the compulsive negative habit pattern. This manifests itself in the fear of rejection or criticism. We're all sensitive to the opinions of others, especially to the responses and reactions of our parents toward us when we are growing up. Parents often take advantage of their children's need to please them, to control and manipulate them. They give or withhold approval and support based on the behavior of the child at the moment. When the child does or says something the parents don't like, they immediately become rejecting and critical of the child. Since the parent's approval and support is like a psychological lifeline to the emotional health of the child, the child immediately pulls back from the behavior to regain the love and approval of the parents. Parents very soon slip into the habit of manipulating the child with carrot and stick treatment. They alternate with approval and disapproval, with compliments and criticism, to control and manipulate the child's behavior. As a child, you are too young to understand what is going on. You know only one thing. The love and approval of your parents is indispensable to your well-being. It's the key to your emotional health. You therefore learn that if I want to get along, I have to go along. At an early age, you begin to conform your behaviors to earn the approval and avoid the disapproval of your parents. The approval of others. As you grow older, you become increasingly sensitive to the approval or disapproval of others, starting with members of your family and then progressing to your friends and associates. 
The child does not know why the parent is behaving this way. The child simply concludes, every time I do something that mommy or daddy disapproves of, they stop loving me. Therefore, whatever it is, I have to do what makes them happy. I have to do what pleases them. I have to do what they want if I want to be safe. These fears are often manifested in the words, I have to, I have to. As an adult, the child who is subjected to disapproval and destructive criticism becomes hypersensitive to the attitudes and opinions of others. They are continually saying, I have to do this, or I have to do that. When the fear of rejection becomes extreme, an individual becomes so sensitive to the opinions of others that he or she cannot make a decision until absolutely convinced that everyone affected will approve and support the choice. Teenagers especially become extremely sensitive to whether they are liked or disliked by their peers. Instead of being fearless and spontaneous, completely open, honest, and expressive, they begin to shape their behaviors to conform with whatever they feel their peers will approve of at the moment. Like a deer in the headlights. The worst situation of all, which is quite common, is the combined feeling of, I have to, but I can't. People feel that they must do something to win the approval of an important person, but simultaneously they're afraid of trying anything new or different and become extremely sensitive to the reaction and comments of anyone around them. The root cause of negative habit patterns can almost always be traced back to destructive criticism in early childhood. Often, destructive criticism is accompanied by physical punishment. In either or both cases, the child very quickly loses his or her natural spontaneity and becomes fearful and hypersensitive to others. All the other fears that hold people back, the fears of loss, poverty, embarrassment, ridicule, ill health, the loss of love, public speaking, taking a chance, starting or trying something new or different, are rooted in the fears of failure and rejection that begin in early childhood. The Antidote to All Your Fears One of the greatest discoveries in the development of the peak performance personality is that your fears and your level of self-esteem have an inverse or opposite relationship to each other. In other words, the more you like yourself, the less you fear failure and rejection. The higher your levels of self-esteem, the lower are the fears and doubts that hold you back. The more you value yourself, the more willing you are to take risks and endure the inevitable setbacks, obstacles, and temporary failures that will occur. The more you like yourself, the less concerned you are with the approval or disapproval of other people. You go your own way. As we said earlier, the very fastest way to build your self-esteem and self-confidence and to neutralize the fears that may be holding you back is to repeat continually the words, I like myself. Whenever you feel doubtful or uneasy, begin repeating these words to yourself. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. The most important million-dollar habit you can develop is the habit of deliberately building your own self-esteem and self-confidence on a daily basis. The more you feed your mind with positive words, pictures, and thoughts, the more confident, optimistic, and unafraid you become. The more you like yourself, the better you do at anything you attempt. The more you like yourself, the less you fear failure and rejection. The more you like yourself, the less you worry about short-term setbacks and obstacles. The more you like yourself, the greater courage and resilience you will have to face the inevitable ups and downs of life. And the more you like yourself, the more you will persist until you succeed. Self-esteem is everything. Fulfill your complete potential. There are four more mental laws you need to know and work with to fulfill your complete potential. The first of these is the law of habit. This law says that whatever you do repeatedly eventually becomes a new habit. In its simplest terms, this means that you can develop any habit of thought or action you desire if you just repeat it often enough and long enough. We will talk about new habit formation and development in Chapter 3. The second law you must know and use is the law of emotion. This law says every action that you take is stimulated by an emotion of some kind, either positive or negative. You can think of emotions the way you would think of a campfire. For the campfire to continue burning, you must continually put wood on the fire. If you stop putting wood on the fire, it will eventually go out. The things you think about most of the time are very much like logs on the fire. If you think about what you want and how to get it most of the time, more and more of your mental abilities will be focused on achieving the goals you have set for yourself. But, because your amount of thinking time is limited, when you discipline yourself to think only about what you want, you stop thinking about what you don't want. You stop putting wood on the fire of your negative emotions. As a result, the fire goes out. You begin to eliminate the doubts and fears that hold most people back. Concentrate on what you want. This brings us to the law of concentration. This law says, whatever you dwell upon grows and expands in your life. In other words, whatever you think about most of the time increases. More and more of your emotions and mental energies become focused and concentrated on what you are dwelling upon. The more you think about your goals and how to accomplish them, the faster you will move toward them. You will focus more and more of your emotional energy on them, and you will have less energy available for the problems, worries, and concerns that preoccupy most people. 
The final law in this chapter is the law of subconscious activity. This law says that your subconscious mind accepts any thought, plan, or goal created by the conscious mind and then organizes your thoughts and behaviors to bring that goal into reality. Whatever thoughts or goals you repeat over and over in your conscious mind are eventually accepted by your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind then goes to work 24 hours a day to coordinate your thoughts, words, and actions to bring those goals into your life. One thought at a time. Your conscious mind can only hold one thought at a time, whether it is positive or negative. You may be capable of thinking hundreds of thoughts in a row, but you can think of only one thought at a time, and you are always free to choose that thought. An essential success habit is the habit of keeping your mind focused clearly on the goals you want to achieve and the actions you must take to achieve them. When you make a habit of thinking and talking most of the time about where you are going and how to get there, you take complete control of the development of your self-concept and your personality. You step on the accelerator of your own potential. You move yourself onto the fast track in your life. You begin to move ahead at a speed that will amaze you and everyone around you. Your potential is unlimited. You are a remarkable person, possessed of incredible untapped potentials and abilities. Whatever you have accomplished in life so far is only a shadow of what is truly possible for you. There are virtually no limits on what you can do, be, and have, except for the ones you impose on yourself with your own thinking. Of all creatures, only human beings can reprogram themselves and alter the courses of their lives. You can decide right now to take complete control of the shaping and sculpting of your self-concept and turn yourself into the very best person you can become by releasing your subconscious breaks, your fears of failure and rejection, and by building your self-esteem and self-confidence through positive self-talk. You can unlock your potential and accomplish any goal you can set for yourself. By taking complete control of the development of your self-concept, you lay the foundation for the million-dollar habits that will enable you to accomplish more in the next couple of years than the average person accomplishes in a lifetime. Orson Sweat Martin wrote, Man becomes a slave to his constantly repeated acts. What he at first chooses, at last compels. So here's some action exercises for you. Identify the primary causes for the effects in your life. Why are you where you are today? And what could you do differently to get different results in the future? This is a great question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you feel that you are in control of your own life? What could you do to increase your feelings of control? What do you think about most of the time? What should you focus and concentrate on to improve your life? What are the three values, qualities, and attributes of other people that you most admire? What actions could you take to incorporate those values into your personality? How much do you like yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? What are the experiences that give you your greatest feelings of self-esteem and how could you create more of them? What are your greatest fears? How would you behave differently if you had no fears at all? What can you do starting today to feed your mind with more of the thoughts, words, people, and pictures that are more consistent with the very best person you could be and the most important goals you want to achieve? Chapter 3 Becoming a Person of Value Thoughts lead on to purpose. Purposes go forth in actions. Actions form habits, habits decide character, and character fixes our destiny. That's from Tryon Edwards. Almost everything you are or will become will be determined by your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Most psychologists agree that fully 95% of everything you think, feel, and do will be determined by your habits. The key to becoming a great person and living a great life is for you to develop the habits of success that lead inevitably to your achieving everything that is possible for you. Fortunately, all habits are learned and are therefore learnable. If you have bad habits or you have not yet developed the habits you need to help you reach your full potential, you can develop these good habits through a systematic process of practice and repetition. Good habits are hard to learn but easy to live with. Bad habits, on the other hand, are easy to learn but hard to live with. In either case, once you have developed a habit, it becomes automatic and easy. Like breathing in and breathing out, you find it easier and easier to engage in thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are consistent with the person you want to be and the goals you want to achieve. Where Habits Are Born A habit has been defined as a conditioned response to stimuli. This means that something happens to you or within you and you react automatically. But where do these habits originate? A habit develops as a result of your responding in a particular way to a particular stimulus, often starting early in life. It is very much like driving and coming to a fork in the road. Whichever direction you go, good or bad, largely determines where you end up. Fortunately, you are born with no habits at all. You have acquired them all since infancy. Different habits take different time periods to develop, whether they are ones you desire or ones you want to break. 
Fortunately, there is a proven system you can use to accelerate the process of new habit pattern development. Behavioral psychologists refer to operant conditioning to describe how people learn certain automatic behaviors. They sometimes refer to the SBC model of new habit formation. These three letters stand for stimulus, behavior, and consequences. First, something happens in your life that stimulates a thought or feeling. Second, in response, you behave a particular way. Third, as a result, you experience a certain consequence. If you repeat this process often enough, you develop a new habit. The Pavlovian response. In experiments conducted by Russian scientist Ivan Pavlov with dogs, some of the first major experiments on the role of classical conditioning, a hungry dog was given a piece of meat while a bell was rung at the same time. This process was repeated several times over several days. Each time the dog received the meat, the dog would salivate in anticipation of the food, and the bell would ring. After repeating this stimulus response action several times, the dog would salivate automatically upon hearing the bell, even when no meat was present. In the same way, you can develop conditioned responses to people and situations as a result of previous experiences, either positive or negative. For example, if there is someone in your life you love and care about, the thought of that person or the sound of that person's voice on the phone will immediately cause you to smile and feel happy. Conversely, if there is a person in your life, usually from your past, who has hurt you and made you angry or unhappy, the very thought of that person or even the person's name will immediately trigger feelings of anger or sadness. Many people become trapped by memories of unhappy experiences, which have become habitual responses and are often unable to let them go. As simple as ABC. Another model of habit pattern development is called the ABC model. These three letters stand for antecedent, behavior, and consequences. What psychologists have discovered is that the antecedents, what has happened in the past, stimulate only 15% of your behaviors. Fully 85% of your behaviors are motivated by what you expect to happen in the future, the anticipated consequences. For example, if you are preparing to give a presentation or apply for a job, 85% of your motivation will be determined by what you expect to happen if you are successful. Only 15% of your motivation will be decided by what you have done in the past in similar circumstances. Expectations theory. There's a large block of work in psychology called expectancy theory. This work maintains that people are motivated to act in a particular way by what they expect to happen more than by any other factor or influence. In other words, you do the things you do because of the consequences you feel you will experience as a result. Expectations theory explains small things like what you do and say in a social situation and large matters such as capital movements in the international financial markets. As we discussed in chapter one, you can manufacture your own expectations. You can develop the habit of expecting good things to happen, no matter how they may appear at the moment. Your expectations then influence your attitudes and the way you treat other people. Your attitudes, expectations, and behaviors will then have an inordinate influence on the way things actually work out. In effect, you can control much of your own future by expecting things to happen in a positive way. Unfortunately, negative expectations also become self-fulfilling prophecies. If you expect something to turn out poorly, it will affect your attitude and behavior. Your negative attitude then increases the likelihood that you will experience the negative consequences you anticipated. If you repeat this pattern often enough, you'll develop a negative and pessimistic attitude. This way of thinking will become a habit. New Habit Pattern Development How long does it take to develop a new habit? The time period can range from a single second to several years. The speed of new habit pattern development is largely determined by the intensity of the emotion that accompanies the decision to begin acting in a particular way. Many people think, talk about, and resolve to lose weight and become physically fit. This may go on for years. Then one day the doctor says, if you don't get your weight down and improve your physical condition, you're in danger of dying at an early age. Suddenly, the thought of dying can be so intense or frightening that the individual immediately changes his diet, begins exercising, stops smoking, and becomes a healthy and fit person. Psychologists refer to this as a significant emotional experience, or an SEE. Any experience of intense joy or pain, combined with a behavior, can trigger a new behavior pattern that may endure for the rest of a person's life. For example, putting your hand on a hot stove or touching a live electrical wire will give you an intense and immediate pain or shock. The experience may only take a split second, but for the rest of your life you will possess the habit of not putting your hand on hot stoves or touching live electrical wires. The habit will have been formed instantly and will endure permanently. According to the experts, it takes about 21 days to form a habit pattern of medium complexity. By this, we mean simple habits such as getting up earlier, exercising each morning before you start out, listening to audio programs in your car, going to bed at a certain hour, being punctual for appointments, planning every day in advance, starting with your most important tasks each day, or completing one task before you start something else. These are habits of medium complexity that can be quite easily developed in about three weeks through practice and repetition. How do you develop a new habit? Over the years, a simple, powerful, proven methodology has been created for new habit development. It is very much like a recipe for preparing a dish in the kitchen. 
you can use it to acquire any habits you desire. Over time, you'll find it easier and easier to develop the habits you want to incorporate into your personality. Seven steps to a new habit. Number one, make a decision. Decide clearly that you're going to begin acting in a specific way 100% of the time. For example, if you decide to rise early and exercise each morning, set your clock for a specific time. When the alarm goes off, immediately get up, put on your workout clothes, and begin your exercise session. Number two, never allow an exception. Do not make exceptions to your new habit pattern during the formative stages. Don't make excuses or rationalizations. Don't let yourself off the hook. If you resolve to get up at 6 a.m. each day, discipline yourself to get up at 6 a.m. every single day until it becomes automatic. Number three, tell others. Inform people around you that you're going to begin practicing a specific behavior. It's amazing how much more disciplined and determined you will become when you know that others are watching you to see if you have the willpower to follow through on your resolution. Number four, visualize yourself. In your mind's eye, see yourself performing the desired behavior. The more often you visualize yourself acting as if you already had the new habit, the more rapidly this new habit will be accepted by your subconscious mind and become automatic. Number five, create an affirmation. Repeat the affirmation over and over to yourself. This repetition dramatically increases the speed at which you develop the new habit. For example, you can say something like, I get up and get going immediately at six each morning. Repeat these words right before you fall asleep. Most mornings you will automatically wake up minutes before the alarm clock goes off and soon you will need no alarm clock at all. Number six, resolve to persist. Keep practicing the new behavior until it is so automatic and easy that you actually feel uncomfortable when you do not do it. And number seven, reward yourself. Give yourself a treat of some kind for practicing the new behavior. Each time you reward yourself, you reaffirm and reinforce the behavior. Soon you begin to associate at an unconscious level the pleasure of the reward with the behavior. You set up your own force field of positive consequences that you unconsciously look forward to as a result of engaging in the behavior that you have decided upon. Overcoming procrastination. Procrastination is a problem for almost everyone. Learning to overcome it is an exercise that will pay off for you all your life. To overcome procrastination, you can practice the seven steps described above. First, resolve to start immediately on your most important task each day. Second, never allow an exception until the habit is firmly entrenched. Third, tell others you are going to stop procrastinating in a particular area. Fourth, visualize yourself starting right in on a task and working at it non-stop until it's complete. Fifth, repeat over and over, I start and work immediately on my most important task. Sixth, discipline yourself to persist every day until it becomes automatic for you to start immediately on your top task. And seventh, reward yourself each time you overcome procrastination and complete an important job. Ever after, practice this process on any new habits you want to develop. Make developing new habits a regular part of your life. Always be working on developing a new habit that can help you. One new habit per month will amount to 12 new habits each year, or 60 new life-enhancing habits every five years. At that rate, your life would change so profoundly that you would become a whole new person in a very positive way in a very short period of time. Take it easy on yourself. Where do you start when developing a new habit pattern? When people first learn about the importance of developing new habits and how positive patterns of thought and behavior can have a wonderful effect on their lives, they often make the mistake of resolving to develop several new habits at once. They decide to improve in every area of their lives simultaneously. They very excitedly draw up a list of new habits they desire for their work, financial lives, business activities, relationships, family, health, and personal organization skills. As a result, they very quickly hit a mental wall and see no improvement at all. Here's the rule for developing new habits. Be patient with yourself. It has taken you a lifetime to become the person you are today. It's not possible for you to change everything overnight. You should therefore select the single habit that you feel can be most helpful to you right now. Write it down and create a positive affirmation combined with a visual image of yourself acting exactly as if you already had that new habit. You then launch immediately and never allow an exception. Talk to yourself positively and tell yourself that you already have this habit. Imagine yourself acting as though you had already learned this behavior. Tell others. Give yourself rewards and reinforcement each time you engage in the new behavior, but only try to change one habit at a time. Being and becoming. You are unique. There never has been nor will there ever be anyone just like you. And what makes you different and special is your mind. It is your ability to think, to decide, and to act. The sum total of your past thoughts and experiences is contained in the person you are today, in your habitual ways of reacting and responding to other people. It is only your actions that tell who you are and what you have become. The good news is that you are not just a human being, you are a human becoming. You are in a continual state of growth and evolution. 
shedding old ideas and habits and developing new ones. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. And that is only limited by your imagination. Permanent Fixtures of Your Mind As it happens, old habits do not die. They don't disappear. When you stop practicing them and discipline yourself to behave in a new way, the old habits become weak and withdraw into your subconscious mind. Your new habits may override and replace the old ones, but you never quite eliminate them completely. They lurk below the surface, waiting to re-emerge when the stimulus that originally created them is repeated. For example, when you were young, you learned how to ride a bicycle. Eventually, you began driving a car. Many years, even decades later, you can get onto a bicycle and within a few seconds be riding for the same balance and skill you had programmed into your subconscious mind as a child. Many people first learned how to drive a car with a standard transmission, a stick shift. Today, most cars have automatic transmissions. You may drive one for years. However, if you were required to drive a car with a stick shift, even after many years, you would slip into the old habit of shifting gears easily and naturally in a few seconds. The old habits never completely go away. Action exercises. What one habit would you like to have more than anything else? What one action could you take immediately to begin developing this habit? What are the most important results or consequences you want to enjoy in your life? What habits would help you the most to achieve them? Select one habit that you would like to develop in your financial life. Define it clearly and then begin work on it today. Select one habit you would like to develop in your family life and the way you interact with others. Begin practicing it today. Select one health habit that could improve your health and fitness more than anything else you could do. Start it today. Select one habit that would help you to be more effective and productive at work and begin acting as if you already had that habit. Imagine that you have no limitations on what you could do, have, or be, or on the habits that you could develop. What goals would you set for yourself? Louis L. Mann once wrote, What happens to a man is less significant than what happens within him. Chapter 4 the habits you need to succeed. Adam Smith wrote, Self-command is not only itself a great virtue, but from it all the other virtues seem to derive their principal luster. One of the most important habits you can develop for success, achievement, and happiness is the habit of self-discipline. Perhaps the best definition of self-discipline comes from author and publisher Albert Hubbard. He wrote, Self-discipline is the ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. The habit of self-discipline is closely tied to the law of control that we talked about earlier. As you recall, the law of control says you feel happy about yourself to the degree to which you feel you are in control of your own life. Self-discipline is the key to self-mastery and self-control. The more capable you become of disciplining yourself to do what you have decided to do, whether you feel like it or not, the more positive and powerful you will feel. The Source of Personal Power There's a direct relationship between self-discipline and self-esteem. The more you discipline yourself to behave in the manner you have chosen, the more you will like and respect yourself. You will feel more positive and confident. You will become stronger and more in charge of your life. Every act of self-discipline strengthens every other discipline at the same time. Every weakness in self-discipline weakens your other disciplines as well. Like working a muscle, your ability to discipline yourself to behave in the way you have decided to behave grows stronger each time you exercise it. This is why the happiest, most successful, and most respected men and women in our society are all people of great self-control, self-mastery, and self-discipline. And this is a habit you can learn with practice. Become a lifelong optimist. Perhaps the most helpful mental habit that you can develop is the habit of optimism. Optimists are usually the happiest, healthiest, most successful, and most influential people in every group in society. According to Dr. Martin Seligman, professor of psychology at the University of Pennsylvania, in his book, Learned Optimism, People learn to become optimists by thinking the way optimists think. They, in effect, learn to be optimists just as pessimists learn to be pessimistic. We said earlier that the greatest discovery in the summary statement of much of psychology, religion, and philosophy is that you become what you think about most of the time. So what do optimists think about most of the time? In its simplest terms, optimists think about what they want and how to get it. They think about where they are going and how to get there. The very act of thinking about what they want makes them happy. It increases their energy and releases their creativity. It motivates and stimulates them to perform at higher levels. Pessimists, on the other hand, think and talk about what they don't want most of the time. They think about the people they don't like, the problems they are having or have had in the past, and especially they think about who is to blame for their situation. And the more they think about the things they don't want and who is to blame for their situation, the uh, more negative and angry they become and the faster they attract into their lives exactly those things they do not want to happen. Develop a hardy personality. There's a relatively new field of medicine called psychoneuroimmunology. 
Research in this area has concluded that the quality of your thinking has an enormous impact on the strength of your immune system. The habit of optimism seems to strengthen and increase the body's T-cells, which are responsible for resisting and overcoming the various factors that contribute to diseases of all kinds. Psychologists have now developed a profile of what they call the hardy personality. This is the person who seems to respond positively and effectively to adversity and setbacks. He is optimistic and straightforward thinking. It seems that the more optimistic you are and stronger and more resilient your mind and body are as well. As a result, you'll have higher levels of energy and a quicker recovery rate from fatigue. You will seldom be ill for any reason. If you catch a cold or flu, which will be rare, you will bounce back quickly, as the fortified T-cells in your body quickly counterattack and eradicate the infection that is causing it. Think about what you want. You develop the habit of optimism by disciplining yourself to keep your thoughts and words on what you want and off what you don't want. You become an optimist by thinking continually in terms of specific actions you can take immediately to achieve the goals that are most important to you. The busier you become working toward the goals and objectives you have set for yourself, the more energy and enthusiasm you will have. The faster you will move ahead, the more you'll get done, and the happier you will be. Radio personality Earl Nightingale once said, Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. When you are working hour by hour and day by day toward the achievement of something that is worthwhile and important to you, your brain releases a steady stream of endorphins, giving you a feeling of happiness and well-being. You feel more positive and creative. You have more energy and enthusiasm. The positive feeling acts as a reward or reinforcement that continually motivates you to think the thoughts and take the actions that move you even more rapidly in the directions of your hope, dreams, and goals. The Orientations of High Performance Optimistic people think very differently from pessimistic people. They develop a series of orientations, or general tendencies of thinking, that separate them from the average person. These orientations soon become habitual ways of thinking and acting that propel them toward the success and happiness they desire. Like all habits, these ways of thinking are learnable through practice and repetition. As you develop the habits of thinking of successful people, you become a different person. In a way, these are the habits of mental fitness. Just as you would become physically fit if you went to a health club and worked out with the equipment regularly, you become mentally fit, positive, and optimistic as you work out your mind practicing these orientations. Think about the future. The first way of thinking practiced by optimists is future orientation. Optimists develop the habit of idealization. In the process of idealizing, you take your thoughts off the present situation and instead imagine a perfect future for yourself in your business, your finances, your family, your health, and any other area. As an exercise, imagine that you have a magic wand and that you could wave this wand and create your ideal future. Instead of worrying about the details of the present moment, ask yourself, what would I really like to be, have, or do sometime in the future? You develop the habit of practicing back from the future thinking. In this type of thinking, you project forward into the future to imagine what your ideal results would look like in every way. You then look back to the present and ask yourself, what would I have to do, starting today, to create the ideal future that I desire? You develop the habit of long-term perspective. Instead of focusing continually on the moment and on immediate actions and gratification, you think long-term about what you want and where you are going. The greater clarity you have about what you want to achieve in the future, the better your decisions will be in the present. When you idealize and practice long-term thinking, you set much better goals and priorities in your day-to-day -day life. Think about your goals. Goal orientation is the second quality or way of thinking practiced by optimists and all successful people. In future orientation, you develop a clear, ideal picture of what you want to accomplish sometime in the future. With goal orientation, you crystallize that image into specific, measurable, detailed goals and objectives that you will need to accomplish to achieve that ideal future vision. Successful people soon develop the habits of personal strategic planning. They sit down and make a list of exactly what they want to accomplish in the short, medium, and long term. They then use a powerful seven-part goal-setting methodology to create blueprints and plans of action that they follow every day. Once you develop the habit of setting goals and making plans to accomplish them, it will become as natural for you as breathing. By following a proven goal-setting process, you will increase the likelihood of achieving your goals by as much as 10 times, by 1,000% or more. This is not just a theory. It's been proved and demonstrated repeatedly by almost every person who practices it. In February 2003, USA Today reported on a study of people who had set New Year's resolutions the year before. They found that only 4% of the people who had made New Year's resolutions but had not put them in writing had followed through on them. But 46% of those people who had written down their New Year's resolutions carried them out. This is a difference in success rates of more than 1,100%. The seven-step formula for goal setting. Many formulas and recipes exist for goal setting. As a rule, 
Any plan is better than no plan at all. Here is one of the best and most effective goal-setting plans or formulas you will ever learn. I've taught this to at least a million people, and many people say it transformed their lives. Step 1. Decide exactly what you want in a certain area and write it down clearly in detail. Make the goal measurable and specific. Step 2. Set a deadline for achieving the goal. If it's a large goal, break it down into smaller parts and set sub-deadlines. Step 3. Make a list of everything you will have to do to achieve this goal. As you think of new items, add them to your list until it is complete. Step 4. Organize your list of action steps into a plan. A plan is a list of activities organized on the basis of two elements, priority and sequence. In organizing by priorities, you determine the most important things you can possibly do on your list to achieve your goal. The 80-20 rule applies. 20% of the things you do will account for 80% of your results. If you do not set clear priorities, you will major in minors and spend much of your time on small and irrelevant tasks that do not help you to achieve your goal. In organizing by sequence, you determine what must be done before something else can be done. You create a checklist. There are always activities that are dependent upon other activities being completed in advance. What are they? And what is the logical order or sequence of completion? Step 5. Identify the obstacles or limitations that might hold you back from achieving your goal, both in the situation and within yourself. Ask yourself, why have I not achieved this goal already? Identify the most important constraint or limitation that is holding you back, and then focus on removing that limiting factor. It could be a certain amount of money or a key resource. It could be an additional skill or habit you need. It could be additional information you require. It could be the help or assistance of one or more people. Whatever it is, identify it clearly and go to work to eliminate it. Step 6. Once you have determined your goal, developed your plan, and identified your major obstacle, immediately take action of some kind toward achieving your goal. Step out in faith. Do the first thing that comes to mind, but do something to start moving toward your most important goal. And step 7. Do at least one thing every day that moves you toward your most important goal. Make a habit of getting up each morning, planning your day, and then doing something, anything, that moves you at least one step closer to what is most important to you. The habit of doing something every single day that moves you toward an important goal develops within you the power of momentum. Daily action deepens your belief that the goal is achievable and activates the law of attraction. As a result, you begin moving faster and faster towards your goal, and your goal begins moving faster and faster toward you. I've spoken to people all over the world for many years who have told me that the habit of acting every day on one or more of their major goals has been life transforming. They have told me that this single habit has been more responsible for their success than any other idea they ever learned. Try it for yourself and see. Set your goals each day. One of the most important habits you can develop is the habit of daily goal setting. Countless people I have taught this to have told me over the years that the power of this process is absolutely incredible. Daily goal setting is quite simple. Get a spiral notebook to write out your goals in and resolve to keep it nearby for the rest of your life. Each morning, before you get going, open your notebook and start a new page. I always begin with the words, my goals are the following, colon. You then write down your top 10 to 15 goals in the present tense as though you have already achieved them. Your subconscious mind is only activated by commands that are stated in the present positive personal tense. So instead of writing a goal as I am going to lose weight in the months ahead, you would write I weigh X number of pounds by a specific date. Instead of saying I will earn more money over the next year, you would say I earn X number of dollars by such and such a date. The more specific you can be in terms of what you want and when you want to achieve it, expressed in the positive present tense and beginning with the word I, the more powerful the effect will be on your subconscious mind. Goals written in this way activate the laws of expectations and attraction. They cause you to develop new beliefs about what is possible for you. They also activate the laws of emotion and correspondence by increasing your energy and stimulating your creativity. Positive personal present tense goals, written down repeatedly each day, activate your subconscious and superconscious minds and step on the accelerator of your potential. As a result, you start to move more rapidly toward achieving your goals, and your goals start to move more rapidly toward you. Think about excellent performance. An important habit of thinking common to optimists is the habit of excellence orientation. The fact is that to accomplish something you have never achieved before, you will have to develop and master one or more skills that you've never had before. By the law of correspondence, your outer world will always be a reflection of your inner world. If you want to change something in your outer world or achieve a new goal, you're going to have to change your inner world in some way. Almost invariably, this requires a new skill set. Here's the good news. A skill is the same as a habit of performance. And like habits, all skills are learnable. You can learn any skill you need to achieve any goal you set for yourself. 
If anyone around you has developed a key skill that has enabled him or her to be more successful, that is proof that you too can learn the skill. It is simply a matter of practice and repetition. Identify your key skills. Excellence orientation requires that you make a list of the key skills essential for success in your field. Usually only about five to seven skills or key result areas determine most of an individual's success in any field of endeavor. Your first job is to identify these key skills and then write them down. Here's an interesting discovery. You have achieved your current level of success because of your talent and ability in certain key areas. But at the same time, you're being held back by your weaknesses in other areas. The rule is that your weakest key skill determines the limits of your results and your income. In other words, you could be excellent at six out of seven key result areas, but your weakness in the seventh area will determine your overall results and rewards in your field. You therefore must ask yourself this question. What one skill, if I developed and did it consistently in an excellent fashion, would have the greatest positive impact on my career? This is one of the most important questions that you can ask and answer throughout your career. You must develop the habit of continually identifying and working on your weakest key skill. Strengthening your ability in this one area will usually have a greater and more immediate impact on your results than anything else you could do. If you do not know the answer to this question, and most people don't, go to your boss or your co-workers and ask them, what one skill, if I developed and did it in an excellent fashion, would help me the most in my job? Pick up the pace. Sometimes I ask my audiences, if a group of children goes for a walk, which child determines the speed of the entire group? They always say, the slowest child. Exactly. Everyone has to wait for the slowest kid. Your slowest kid is your weakest key skill. It sets the speed at which you move ahead in your career and limits how high you can climb. And here is another important point. You are very often weak in an area that you may not particularly like or enjoy. But the reason you do not enjoy that area is because you have not yet mastered it. As soon as you write it down, make a plan, and develop excellence in that skill area, you will relish performing in that area for the rest of your career. The fact is, you could be only one skill away from doubling your productivity, your performance, and your income. Acquiring one key skill in an area where you are currently weak could make it possible for you to use all your other skills at a higher level and accomplish more in your work than you ever thought possible. What one skill could that be? Decide today to develop a habit of excellence orientation. Resolve to join the top 10% of performers in your field. Find out what you have to do and how much you have to earn to be in the top 10%. Set it as a goal. Make a plan and work to develop the essential skills you need every single day. You'll be amazed at how quickly your life changes or even transforms for the better. The pursuit of mastery. The reason many people underachieve in their careers is because they do not realize how long it takes to attain mastery in any field. Extensive research suggests that it requires about five to seven years of hard work for you to move to the top of your field. That means five to seven years of focused, concentrated, determined work on yourself to get better and better in the key result areas responsible for your results and rewards. And there are no shortcuts. Sometimes people say to me, five to seven years is a long time to achieve mastery in my field. This is true, but I remind them that the time is going to pass anyway. The biggest regret many people report is not starting early enough. Five to seven years from now, five to seven years will have passed. The only question is, where are you going to be five to seven years from now in your field? The good news is that if you set it as a goal, make a plan and work on it every day, five to seven years from now, you're going to be in the top 10% of people in your field. You're going to be one of the highest paid and most respected people in your industry. You'll be enjoying the rewards of the top performers in your business. Remember, nobody is better than you and nobody is smarter than you. If someone is doing better than you, it just means that they started to work on themselves earlier than you did. And whatever anyone else has done, you can do as well. There are no limits except the ones you place on yourself with your mind. The fact that others have been able to excel in a field after starting out with no experience or skills is proof that you can do the same. Your job is to put your head down, get busy, and go to work on yourself. Resolve today to develop the habit of personal excellence and focus all your energies on joining the top 10% of professionals in your field. Once you do that, your entire future will open in front of you. You will become unstoppable. Increase your income 1,000%? In my book, Focal Point, I explain my 1,000% formula in detail. Briefly, it says that if you work on yourself continually, you can increase your productivity, performance, and output by one-tenth of 1%, one one-thousandth, each working day. One-tenth of 1% per day translates into approximately one-half of 1% per week, or 2% improvement per month. That adds up to a 26% improvement in productivity, performance, and output each year. Almost anyone who dedicates himself or herself to continued personal growth and learning can upgrade his performance and productivity by 26% each year. 
an improvement of 26% each year, compounded year by year, means you will double your productivity, performance, and output in 2.7 years. Over the course of 10 years, by improving yourself by one one-thousandth per day, one-tenth of one percent, you will increase your productivity, performance, and rewards by 1,004%. as an increase in your income of 10 times. Not long ago, I was giving a day-long seminar in Seattle. A young man approached me at the break and reminded me he had been through my program and learned this 1,000% formula some years ago when he was in his early 20s. He said, I just wanted to tell you personally that your formula doesn't work. As you can imagine, I was a bit surprised, so I asked him, how do you mean? He smiled broadly and said, it's too conservative. It doesn't take 10 years. It only took me seven years to increase my income 10 times by following that formula every single day. Last year, I earned exactly 10 times what I was earning when I first heard that formula from you when I was 23 years old. He told me that his income as a car salesman seven years ago had been $35,000 per year. In the previous year, he had earned more than $350,000 and was now one of the top automobile marketing consultants in the automobile industry in the Pacific Northwest. His previous employer paid him as much today on retainer as a consultant as he used to earn working for him full time. Are these results possible for you? Of course they are. The law of cause and effect says that if you do what other successful people do, you'll eventually get the same results that they do. This is not a wish or a theory, it's a universal law. The law itself is neutral. It works for everybody, everywhere. Commit to lifelong learning. Another key habit of thinking and acting practiced by top people is called growth orientation. It is the high road to excellent performance and is essential to developing the habit of optimism. This method of thinking and living is the foundation of excellence orientation and is essential for you to develop if you want to move into the top 10% of your field. Growth orientation requires that you develop the habit of continuous learning, the habit of continuous personal and professional development. Just as you exercise physically on a regular basis to remain fit and healthy, you must